Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Thank you so much for making History Shorts part of your daily routine. And if you have not already done so, make sure you click that subscribe button. If you have a comment, you can find me at www.historyshortspodcast.com. If you like the show and want to support it, the best thing you can do is tell a friend. You could also spread the word on social media, leave a review, or buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash history shorts podcast. Have a great rest of your day. When you set off to conquer Peru in 1522, the Spanish explorer Francisco Pizarro was already known for numerous expeditions to the New World. Yet, it would be the peculiar events surrounding the takeover of the Incas and the arrest and eventual execution of the kingdom's emperor Atahualpa that would cement Pizarro as one of the bloodiest and most controversial conquistadors in the history of exploration. And that's saying something. I am your host. Peter Zablocki, and this is History Shorts. In 1532, Francisco Pizarro, a seasoned Spanish conquistador, arrived on the coast of Peru with a small expeditionary force of around 160 men, including soldiers, cavalry, and a few cannons. The Spanish were motivated by the tales of immense wealth and the legendary riches of the Inca Empire, which was one of the largest and most sophisticated civilizations in the world at the time. Despite their relatively small numbers, the Spaniards had advanced weaponry, including firearms and steel swords, which would prove to be crucial in their conquest. At the time, the Inca Empire was embroiled in a civil war between two brothers, Atahualpa and Huascar, vying for the throne. Atahualpa had recently emerged victorious in this conflict, consolidating his power. Pizarro and his men moved inland, and upon reaching the town of Cajumarca, they sent emissaries to invite Atahualpa to a meeting. Confident in his strength and unaware of the Spanish threat, Atahualpa agreed to meet Pizarro, bringing thousands of his soldiers to Cajamarca. On November 16, 1532, the 80,000-strong, seen for miles on their approach, was definitely a sight to behold for the Spaniards as they awaited the emperor's approach. Pizarro had a plan, however. He would go through with the meeting and receive Atahualpa as a friend and brother, but if the emperor proved too strong, he would be taken hostage right away. The emperor entered the town square just as the sun was setting. He left most of his army to camp half a mile away, but still brought a couple of thousand strong with him just to be safe. Unfortunately, he left them unarmed, as he did not expect any conflict and thought this was just a friendly meeting. The emperor himself, covered in emeralds and wearing a crown of parrot feathers, was carried on a gold-plated litter held up by 80 finely dressed Incan nobles. Atahualpa was unaware that more of Pizarro's men, who he could not see, heavily armed with guns and crossbows and steel swords, were actually hidden in buildings and trees surrounding the square, only waiting to spring their trap. A Spanish friar, Vincent de Valverde, approached Atahualpa, attempting to persuade him to convert to Christianity and accept the sovereignty of King Charles V of Spain. Atahualpa, proud and defiant, refused the friar's demands, and threw the Bible handed to him right to the ground. In fact, Atahualpa demanded that the Spanish return all that they had taken from the Incas since their arrival and quickly depart. Pizarro raised his hand. He saw enough, and now the prearranged signal was given. Instantly, the tranquility of the square shattered, as Spanish forces hidden until that moment sprang into action. The deafening roar of cannons and the sharp cracks of muskets echoed through the plaza, filling the air with smoke and terror. The sight of mounted Spanish cavalry, the first horses the Incas had ever seen, only added to the chaos and confusion. 
The noise, smoke, and the sight of their comrades being cut down by the Spanish weapons induced panic among the Incas. The Spaniards, armored and experienced in combat, moved efficiently and ruthlessly, slashing through the Inca ranks with their swords and firing their guns into the dense crowds. With confusion and fear among the Incas, making them easy targets for the well-coordinated Spanish attack, Pizarro focused on capturing Atahualpa. The litter bearers actually tried to protect the emperor, but they were quickly overwhelmed. Pizarro himself reached the litter, dragged Atahualpa down, and took him prisoner. The capture of Atahualpa was a pivotal moment. Thousands of unarmed Incas lay dead or dying, their bodies spread across the plaza, while the Spanish, in contrast, suffered minimal casualties, with only a few minor injuries among their ranks. The battle, if you could call it that, was pretty much over. And now, with Atahualpa in chains, Pizarro had effectively decapitated the leadership of the Inca Empire. Even as prisoner, however, Atahualpa maintained a semblance of his regal dignity. Held under guard in a town of Cajumarca, he was aware of the Spanish lust for wealth and quickly sought to use it to his advantage. He made a bold offer to Pizarro. In exchange for his release, he promised to fill a large room with gold and another two rooms with silver. This offer was not just grand in scale, it was actually unprecedented in history. Atahualpa's offer amounted to the largest ransom ever demanded. Messengers were sent through the Inca Empire to gather the ransom for months, and the Incas loyal to their leader responded by bringing immense quantities of gold and silver to Cajamarca. Sacred idols, ceremonial objects, and countless other treasures were melted down to meet the demand. The gold alone, it is said, filled a room that measured 22 by 17 feet and 8 feet in height. The silver filled two equally large rooms. This extraordinary display of wealth astonished the Spaniards and further inflamed their greed. They never actually let the emperor go. During his captivity, Atahualpa continued to try to govern his empire. He sent orders and even tried to keep his empire intact, but the strain of captivity and the physical distance from his power base severely weakened his authority. Meanwhile, the Spanish presence in Cajumarca grew stronger as more conquistadors arrived, drawn by the promise of unimaginable wealth. The longer Atahualpa was held, the more the Spaniards worried about the potential for an Inca uprising. Rumors and fears began to circulate among the Spanish soldiers that the Incas were actually preparing forces to free their emperor. Pizarro, now sensing the growing tension and influenced by his men's impatience and desire for decisive action, himself began to see Atahualpa as more of a liability than an asset. Pizarro then orchestrated a mock trial accusing Atahualpa of various crimes, including polygamy and conspiring against the Spanish. The charges were largely fabricated or misunderstood aspects of Incan culture, but the trial served its purpose. Atahualpa was found guilty and sentenced to death. On August 29, 1533, Atahualpa was brought to the square in Cajumarca, the same place where he had been ambushed and captured. Bound and surrounded by his captors, he faced his execution with a mix of stoicism and resignation. The method chosen for his execution was a form of strangulation that was considered much less barbaric than burning at the stake, which was actually initially used to threaten him into converting to Christianity. In his final moments, Atahualpa was indeed baptized as a Christian, taking the name Francisco after his captor. As you can probably imagine, he had no say in the matter, as it was just a hollow gesture, a mere formality that did little to change the tragic nature of his fate. The killing of Atahualpa and the subsequent sacking of the Inca capital of Cusco signaled the Spanish dominance over the region and the end of the Incan Empire. Interestingly enough, many in Spain saw the execution of Atahualpa, a captive under Spanish protection and a royal, as murder and scandal. Even the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V was appalled by Pizarro, a mere common soldier, executing a monarch, and officially reprimanded the conquistador. A first for both, actually. Was Pizarro the most cruel and controversial conquistador? Well, he does have a lot of company there. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone. 
My name is Tom Kearns, and I host the Anglo-Saxon England podcast, where I cover the history and culture of England from the departure of the Romans in the 5th century to the Norman Conquest in 1066. So far, we've surveyed the collapse of Roman rule in Britain, the migration of the Anglo-Saxons, and the history of Northumbria from its beginnings in the mists of legend to its destruction at the hands of Viking raiders in the 9th century. I hope you'll come and give it a go.